Hey. Hey. <laughs> nice to How hear you, you again. Me? You sound you sound giddy. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty energized because we're going to be talking about something I love today, which Wait. is um, brothels. Just can't <gasps> get enough brothels. So, brothels. Like I, you know, yeah. yeah, I'm just I'm just psyched for today's subject. I'm really I'm here for it. So if, if, I, if I sound really animated, it's because I'm in my history geek mode. Full that's, on. It's all good. It's all good. That's why we're here. <laughs> that's why we're here. So what what a, what kind of brothels? Where are we talking? What where and when are we talking? So I am thrilled for you to teach me a little bit more about this today, about Pompeii, about like <gasps> Roman resort town brothels. Pompeii. Um, oh. And just the sex life of Pompeii too. Because like, I mean, I don't know, vacation sex, hotel sex. I bet Romans had hotel sex. Oh, right. I'm Roman sh- couples. They had to have. I'm sure yeah. they did. So I'm sure this whole city is like breathing and writhing and wriggling and like, oh, yeah, yeah. grinding all over just the place. Grinding so. and yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, so for I cannot sure. wait to learn more about yeah about oh uh, okay so about all the kinky shit that Pompeians got up to. Well, I okay. First of all, disclaimer: I have not been to Pompeii, although I would love to. I would absolutely <gasps> love to. Have you? I have a little glass jar. Yes, <gasps> um, I went. So I went like I did my little college after graduating college. My parents were nice enough to give me the little you know student tour oh, nice. present. So I just bl- blitzed Europe. That sounds really bad, but I, <laughs> I, traveled, I traveled all over Europe in Alexa a very fast does pace. Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you managed to on your blitz you managed well, to you managed to yes dive bomb yeah, Pompeii. I, I, awesome. I blitzed by Pompeii and I, I grabbed so I have a little I brought a bunch of little vials that I because I'm a weirdo I brought little glass vials with me on this trip and I have one that still has uh water from the Grand Canal in Venice and oh, then no. um one that has soil from and yeah like uh what is it called what is dried lava why am i blanking on that ash the ashes from the- ash yeah i want to say ash but That's it's like I solidified think. ash okay but it's so dry- <laughs> i well, have we're- some dirt from pompeii in okay some dirt <laughs> I was going to say, this is not like a <laughs> geological podcast here. We don't know anything about <laughs> yeah, any right. of this shit. Welcome so- <laughs> to Rock Talk. <laughs> rock Talk. <laughs> it's not as rocking as it sounds. No. No, we mean <laughs> basil. <laughs> Igneous, baby. Woo! Yeah. Woo-hoo! Okay. Oh, I like that. So, That's a money word. So you actually have more experience so, yes, with Pompeii than I do. <laughs> but. I'm so jealous. So well, I'm, I'm... It's, you know, in that I walked around in, in one day at 22. Although I, you know, I was a Latin nerd in high school. So I. Oh, me too. Like, I just uh, yeah, Latin really in high school whole, too. Yeah, yeah. So it was crazy. Okay, so. A little bit. So, so yeah, I walked around for a day and I loved it. And it, it's a really cool, it's stunning. And it's, it's, um, it is powerful when you see the casts that are made. Oh, um, I know. So, okay. I'm going to go off here. Okay. Um, And just give some context, right? Like, so when we talk about Pompeii, we're talking obviously about an ancient Roman village that is preserved because of an eruption. Was it Etna? Mount Etna that went off? Vesuvius, that's right. Um, So, oh yeah, and it was a different big old, big old explosion. Um, Huge. But Vesuvius erupted and blanketed this city with ash and with, yeah, it was ash. Lava, I don't think, reached there. Um, but yeah, hot ash raining down from the sky, like obliterated this entire resort town. But what it did was it preserved everything like in, you know, almost like an insect and amber kind of thing where, um, archeologists excavated this place and found, um, casts of human beings that were made by this, by this, uh, ash solidifying over the years. And so you see the, the positions that people were in when they died. I know. It's and so touching, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot, man. You walk by, I mean, there are a lot of them are encased in glass and you walk by, you know, you don't, you don't linger. It's a little morbid feeling, but um, to see them huddled up or holding each other, it brings you, oh, it's so, yeah. there's so much immediacy in that. It brings you right into what they were experiencing and the fear that yeah, developed. It's, it's like, intense. It's like ghosts or something. It's like the, you know, there's this the shadow of this person who was actually sitting here or lying here and yeah. they're not there anymore. They're all, go- every part of them is gone except the outline of their body. Yes. Yes. And that's like that's so creepy, but it's so it's so sad too because you see the little kids and you see the, like yes. you say, the lovers holding like each other holding and yeah, yes. like, oh my uh, god. It so just tell, it, it tells so much. There's so much context in every everything that you walk by. So there's so Pom- yeah, Pompeii definitely has like this morbid kind of spooky side, but when it was a thriving town, totally different story, right? right. Like right, I'm I mean it was it. I don't, 
Romans had a lot of resort towns um, on the coast of Italy, but this was like this was one of the major places to go. This is a place to see and be seen and have your best villa and, and so this show like off. South Beach like, kind of like like for, yes. for Romans kind of yeah. So absolutely. So so yeah, I mean the the, the contrast is really interesting too. You have a, a, a ghost town now, but you know in its heyday, it was it was the place to be. It was happening. And, and there's so, a lot of stuff going on. So when they actually excavated the, these, like this, several feet of ash, and they and they found obviously not just the people, they found the buildings and the streets and a lot of the structures that were kind yes. of frozen in time. And that's how we, that's how we know the, what this town was like. That's how you can walk through it because it's actually kind of still there. Is that? Yeah. Would you say that's kind of the way it feels when you're there? Absolutely. Yeah. It feels. It. it, it there is that kind of weird blanket of sadness over some of it, but at the same time, when you're just walking around the the ruins themselves, I mean, it's there, they are, it's so preserved and it's the scale of it is really just to, to see this was real. This existed. This isn't just in a book. Yeah. Um, this is like it's, somebody's it's house. Really cool. Here's the, here's the baker. Here's the whatever. You can and, see. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see there's a, there's a, there's one villa that has a mosaic um, that it, that says Kawe Kanam, which is beware of the dog. <laughs> and so it was and it was, it was this amazing mosaic of like the snarling slavering slavering right, dog right they were so um, good at that weren't they it's just it's such a cool little it immediately pulls you into like we haven't changed we're still yeah, the same, we're still we're still the same. We, we still loved our pets and we had guard dogs in our right. fancy villas to let them know uh-uh this yeah, is not yeah, the place yeah you're not no. doing this no we're, we're not, not watch. Here. No, not exactly. only, yeah. And it, <laughs> yeah, so to preserve all, and like the graffiti about like Maximus is an asshole or, you know, like that kind of like yes. written on ur- urinal stalls. Yes. And there was like, I think there was, I remember hearing something about graffiti for supporting a, a politician in an upcoming election. And it would be like <laughs> the fruit sellers support Andronicus or whatever it is, you know, and it's just <laughs> like, it's like it's exactly the same. But okay, the reason that it's delightful, the reason that we're talking about it is. Yes. Like you said, the mosaics in particular, and some of the drawings, and <laughs> a couple of the other things. This this is what we this is what Pompeii is becoming increasingly known for. Yes, the from what I know because I've seen documentaries and I know you have too. Mm-hmm. The in some places, uh, actually, first let me start with something on the outside. Mm-hmm. I've seen and heard that there are lots of carved examples all over the streets of Pompeii of what can <laughs> only be described as a big old dick that there's oh, just these... I thought you were going to say phallus <laughs> I told you this isn't a very scientific I podcast it, I love it big old dick <laughs> yeah okay a phallus if you insist no I love it we're talking I mean... about phallic symbols in the ancient city of Pompeii yes and the, the, the phallic symbol was actually represented the... no never mind the big old dick and so the, these things were like carved into the walls and above the stores and yes. on the streets and stuff and so that's fascinating to us because in our modern world that would that's kind of like sharp and take a breath like oh, really <laughs> really you know what what is that Put a, a dick? dick on it is that a di- yeah exactly so <laughs> so i've heard several theories about what this is have you heard theories about the the dicks everywhere yeah i've heard that they are okay so they're we'll get into priapus later i'm sure but yes. um we'll, we'll deal with him but so that aside i think that they were um kind of like Okay, so the town I live in, there's a lot of uh, movie production work that goes on here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm leaving, but for now, (laughs) I live here. Um, But you see cast signs, like yellow signs, production signs with like a little code on them and an arrow. Like, here's where the production camp is, right? So I, yeah, I've I've heard the theory that these phalluses, these big old old dicks are pointing the way to the brothel. Like, boners, go this way. Right. If you got a boner, boner. follow the boner, go here. Follow the boner. Now, I heard, and I've heard that one too. Now, I've heard an alternate theory, which is Mm -hmm. that this was not a sign marker for brothels. This was just, they liked dicks. They and did it, love dicks. They, they were real. Yeah. That they good just, luck dicks. Yeah. Good luck dicks, basically. And so that it, you could easily see carvings of dicks on the street the way we might see, <laughs> I don't know, like birds or, <laughs> or like horseshoes like or, or just, yeah. yeah, like it was just a decor, decorative thing. And that when they 
carver, whoever carved it into the stone, was, was choosing to put some kind of lovely, charming symbol of happy, happy, joy, joy. What else was he going to do but a big old dick? So that's that's a theory I've heard anyway. The Roman smiley face. That's, that's it. That's exactly it. A dick in two balls is the Roman smiley face. That's pretty much it. And have a great day. Right. Yeah. yeah. You have a great day, too. So, you know, I I like this idea myself. Yeah. Because. So, so multifunctional. Dicks isn't can it? do so much. Dicks are you know, amazing. They, can, just, they but, can light the way or they can bless you. That's right. <laughs> Benediction. Get it? <laughs> oh, 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 it's a groaner. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. Um, but, yeah. And, and the oh, thing dear. is, what I like about it is that it was, it's hard for us to imagine. But, but seriously, imagine a culture that just did not have the hangups that we have about it that they just yes. they looked at it like okay this is a an important part of the human body and yep. we're just going to celebrate it because it's pretty important and everybody likes it and <laughs> it's like yes. whether you own it or whether you just like to play with it it's great so you know <laughs> it is prominent <laughs> it, yes and you can't miss it and so it's right. kind of kind of neat i like that idea but that psychological angle to it is really it really is interesting and it, yeah. it's something i think we, we have to bear in mind too when we talk about pompeii too is just the roman attitude towards sex is not i mean i grew up in the in the bible belt of the south so I have learned that the, everything is shameful and hide it. Right. No, and don't talk about it. And you're right. even just no, no, no. So when I read about Pompeii or watch documentaries or anything, it's I have to jumpstart my brain and think about the fact that they were completely shameless about sex in the human body. There yeah. was no, yeah. there's no privacy in the Roman world. Everything's kind of a natural. Just okay, yeah. Women, women can go bare breasted. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, like it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Um, and sex was just seen as a pleasure to enjoy. Like it wasn't a, you know, there were no hang, there weren't hangups. It's just that, that blows my mind. So, yeah. um, I think the fact that you can go to a resort town and buy like a little dick trinket, like a keychain, basically <laughs> to hang off your belt or whatever. I mean, like there's yeah. little, there's little, there's tchotchke shops full of like different little dick. They have bells on them. And oh, yeah. Wow. Um, so the fact that there's a culture out there and this is where I'm, going to bring up Priapus maybe if you want to talk about him sure, a little bit like yeah. the fact that there's a culture out there that celebrates instead of shames uh, 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 is he a demi god I don't I know what he is he's, he's a deity he's... of some form right yeah yeah um with a giant constant erection that's yes. Priapus right there and Priapism is uh medically it's that condition where you have a painful erection which sounds miserable um but they celebrate it the the, the guy the god who inspired it and yes. he constantly has a giant boner and, and he's everywhere in Pompeii everywhere yes and i think people probably have seen the mosaic of him because he's is he's kind of hard to miss he's you know yeah. he's he's the dude like an with aubrey the... beardsley drawing it's crazy right? it's like this enormous enormous like, like it's just really mm -hmm. seriously seriously disproportionate thing sticking out of him and doesn't it have bells on it as well isn't that the one that has yes. bells on it yeah Ding a ling, ding a ling, a ding dong. So, so you know, that, I think everybody's probably seen that. We'll include a picture so that people can know. Maybe I'll put that on the cover. Maybe I'll put it on the cover. Um, <laughs> so, and so Mosaic yeah, like penis. this, this was oh, obviously no. like like such a such a big like a big thing for them. And if they actually put it into their deity thing like i know yeah. that other cultures have done this i know that this exists yeah. in other cultures but it's just interesting that so much of our traditions came from the the roman world the you know yeah. judeo-christian kind of thing and that came from yeah. some of those things and stuff it's interesting to sort of see this and just think like well somebody first of all had to come along and say uh no we're not doing this somebody had to come <laughs> along and say yeah stop that that's not gonna happen right <laughs> We're just not, oh, we're not down man. for this, right? And there's a whole story the behind that. The Pope said no. Right, yeah. basically, right? Yeah. But, Things got a little twisted. But, but it is funny um, that, like, it didn't seem to be, it seemed to be completely normal to them. Like, yes. this was not at all and controversial. Because Roman society, Roman society was so regimented and orderly mm -hmm. and, like, so, I mean, everything was about sort of accomplishments and, and, and being your best and improving yourself and, um, I mean... Roman technology is astounding but yes. um, so the fact that in this orderly society then you have that element of wild sexuality that is completely like just okay yep 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 just as accepted as any other thing any other um, hobby you might have or, or accomplishment you might have it's just it's so it's so fascinating to me that it was just so mundane 
Well, it's interesting because, and again, I may be dipping into another episode here, but I remember reading things when I studied sexuality at university. I remember reading things about some of the Polynesian cultures that, again, it was no big deal. They had a very open-minded view of sex in their when when they were discovered by some of these missionaries and stuff and and explorers when they found these Polynesian countries where everybody was just like eh, whatever you know like it, there, it was it was kind of a very easygoing place sexually speaking but they noticed mm -hmm. there was no rape and there was no like sexual problems and that's fascinating you know their culture was actually kind of didn't really quite understand the idea of sexual violence because you were living in a yeah. culture that didn't like I don't want to say require it but in a sense it was like there's no need for any of these problems because the men and the yeah. women were equal they were able to exchange yeah. uh, you know they had rights they were able to equal say, power yeah. and respect yes. so so if a girl didn't want to have sex with you well you just went to somebody else that wanted to have sex with you like there was no sense that you that she owes it to you or anything like that it was just yeah. like, okay they, you know yeah. divorce was okay like if you didn't want to be with your, your husband anymore you could just leave like there was none of the stuff that we all had at the time in our culture and and to a yeah. little you know to some degree still do and so that's such a beautiful acceptance of humanity yeah, right isn't there. It? that these Human they, they were just yeah kind they, of they very, allow for it yeah and maybe with the romans this is a thing that i find interesting they did a lot of shit that wasn't good there's no question they did a lot of shit that wasn't really really horrific but maybe yeah. the fact that some of their their attitudes towards sex um, contributed in some way to the fact that they had a very functioning society that they yeah. weren't they weren't toppled you, you know there's no sex um, scandal is going to bring down a Roman senator you know what I mean like, yeah exactly not going to happen you know it'll so, make him more prominent people have something to talk about yeah they'll exactly it. they'll want him to come to their dinner parties well, totally because yeah. he'd be a, he'd be a hero he'd be legend man like oh yeah, wow right? Atticus he's coming knew. to our orgy yeah. you got to hit him yeah come on <laughs> what, a, what a get yeah what a get um, <laughs> so, so then okay so now we know we know Priapus, we know there was lovely statue of Priapus, but the thing about the brothels, okay? Tell me, yes. tell me about the brothels in Pompeii. So there were different kind of strata to the brothels in Pompeii. There were the the swanky ones where um, where sex workers would come to you to your villa. You could have host mm. an orgy, and you'd have great wine and food, and they'd entertain, and you know they could sing and play instruments. It was almost like a geisha sort of experience. Mm. Um, and then, you know, and then orgy time. Uh, but there, there were also, you know, it was also like the McDonald's of brothels where you could go in um, right off the street and there would be affordable services there. Uh, and literally, and this is one of my favorite details about, about Pompeii, and I know you know it, but I'm going to gush over <laughs> here. Um, in case anyone doesn't know, there, there, are, there are brothels where there's a picture menu basically preserved on the walls. Um, and it's, it's sort of, um, there's, it's just, it's almost like a, a, a painted com a fresco Kama Sutra in one of these brothels. <laughs> and so you can literally it. go in. I mean, it's, it's, it's intended as decoration and like to get everybody in the mood, but also you literally can go and point to one and say, I want that. <laughs> and like, you know, it's so transactional. You just go pick what you want, get what you want, get your nut and then go back and about your day afterwards. <laughs> and I just think that's so... It just blows my mind. Like it's, it is amazing, the, uh, and and even the, the imagery, the imagery is often like threesome. Sometimes there's two guys and a girl. Sometimes there's a guy and two girls. Yeah. Sometimes there's different positions. There's like the girl riding the guy. There's just like yeah. there's, like it's it's really just kind of it's shocking a little picture, bit. But I always have when when I remember it, I always think about the reverse cowgirl picture. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, <laughs> that. Maybe we can link that. But it's just one of the best. She is squatting like a pro. <laughs> amazing <laughs> and i think there was even um <laughs> there was one room of the this brothel that in the documentary i saw the brothel was the one that everybody wanted to see there was lineups out into the street where everybody wanted to come <laughs> and see this right which is exactly what happened when i was in the sex museum in amsterdam everybody was lining up to listen to the phone oh, sex yeah. on this in this room that was all hilarious. about like bondage and bdsm and phone sex and stuff and you know it's like, <laughs> of course right but anyway they, go where they, the line is there's totally, always a line for go where the stuff. line is totally and so, in the mornings it's like good coffee <laughs> fresh bread good pussy go where the line is <laughs> totally so 
So in this <laughs> in this brothel, there's this actual stone platform that would have yes. formed the base of the bed, right? I'm assuming they which had they then yeah cushions. Covered, I hope, by the way, because right? I think some people think they just fuck on like yeah. stone platforms, yeah, no. but no, they they had bedding and cushions. Yeah, no, that costs that. extra if you want to fuck on this stone <laughs> cushion. But um, there's even like graffiti on the wall that somebody said something like Marcus had a good fuck here or something like he actually <laughs> he so he felt so inspired by the, the quality of the oh. of the pussy he just got that he had to actually carve because they, they didn't have paper then they just everything had to be carved so this guy That's really must have had a great time right so That's he's like marcus fucked here had a great fuck here so kind of like, like <laughs> i saw i conquered i came yes <laughs> he switched it up Oh, I need to ring a bell or something when you say right. something like this. It's so good. <laughs> how do you how do you invert that, Vinny Vini Vici? Oh God. Well, <laughs> Vidi Vene Vici. Vini Vici. Vini Vici Vini. So much for Latin scholars. <laughs> we you know, highbrow. Yes, this is a class we're, show. We're this elevating is, the discourse. We are. You guys are learning. I know. We are. Look, <laughs> look at what we're teaching them. So so what's interesting, too, is that um, prostitutes at the time, this is what I'm curious about, and I haven't been able to get a clear answer on this, because you'd think, if this was an acceptable part of life, does that mean that prostitutes are actually accepted in that society? Yeah. Some of the things that I've read said yes, and some said no. Some said that yeah. prostitutes were as badly treated uh, then as they are now yeah and other people said it, that some it, yeah. prostitutes were very wealthy and well respected in the town so you don't really know what to believe exactly because you would think that if it was just no big deal then if you're yeah. a prostitute then that's just a job that you have and you know and yet I think it well I think it again it falls into the the sort of I mean the, the stratification of Roman society where it's a classist society so if you are um, a courtesan who is available to the best in society, yes, then you're yes. going to be sort of an object of fascination. Yes. And you're going to be, I mean, like a lot of the ways the celebrities are now where it's sort of, um, I, I, <laughs> Miley Cyrus comes to mind. I don't know why. <laughs> Miley Cyrus. I was watching her on Joe Rogan last night. I think that's what that's about. Okay. <laughs> but like this object of, of complete fascination and some people are just repulsed by it, but it, 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 it's, it's still, you know, you're being seen wherever yes. you go, like there are eyes on you and it, and you're fascinating to people. And then I think if you are one of the, you know, the McDonald's sex workers, then you're gonna, is that derogatory? <laughs> it's just a convenient <laughs> term. But if you work in a, you know, in a pop and go brothel like that, uh, I mean, odds are you are a sex slave and you are yeah. working to earn your freedom, yeah, which, which was allowed. And that's fascinating too, that people could buy their way out. Yeah. Um, but that, that, I think that's the difference right there. It's such a classicist this view of, you know, if you are hanging out with the the creme de la creme, then you're more accepted. And if yes. you're if you're just banging Johns on the street, then um, no, <laughs> no, we're not going to invite you into our villa. And no. and the men too, like the, there were clearly male prostitutes, and there was no big issue. You could just decide, you know, that were usually mostly frequented by other men. But it, yeah. there was no, as far as I know, and I could be wrong about this, but there wasn't much of a stigma. If you were a Roman matron and you had a bit of need for some, you know, some Absolutely. big old dick that you could just go and avail yourself of this of this dude, right? Yes. Um, and if you're rich, I mean, they put gladiators out to stud. That's the biggest deal. You get you a sweaty gladiator. That was like know, the... That's... The juiciest nibble to a Roman matron. That is something else. I can't believe. I think yeah. they found in Pompeii, didn't they? They found a rich woman who was actually in the arms of a gladiator. That's the, because they found her jewelry uh, in the, you know, the gold didn't disintegrate. So they they know that it was within the cast of uh, the, this ash cast, right? And so they knew from what he was wearing that he was a gladiator. Yeah. So they think that they were actually in flagrante delicto. There's more Latin for you guys. When, I love it. When the ash fell. And so that's what they think they were doing. Can um, you imagine being in that situation? Like having the best sex of your life. Like having so much fun. Like this guy is so virile and he just keeps going and he'll do that thing you like. And then you look out, you hear a oh, boom. A boom. And you look out your window. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I mean. Shit. Yeah. I mean, that's a boner killer. That's oh, definitely a boner totally. killer. Totally. Totally. <laughs> wow. 
but it, and I that's, feel for this woman. I do. I know. It's like yeah. maybe she saved up or something, and this was a birthday yeah. present to herself or something. It's so, it's so disappointing, but also what a way to go, too. I'm, I'm torn on my reaction. I know. I'm torn, too. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting that even in the, like, gladiators and all that stuff, everybody knows from watching movies and stuff how, like, horrendous this was, <laughs> like, truly, right? But in, so. it's interesting that even then they had this idea of virility and masculinity and the women wanted this essence they that it was a such a yes. conquest of theirs to be able to to fuck a gladiator it was just like this is the height of i think this is for the woman who has everything right you yeah, right <laughs> you send her to a gladiator right because it was it was like he was supposedly like the the best male around kind yeah. of thing and it's interesting Why, they were that, so into that testosterone thing they? like I, they literally would buy their sweat i find that yeah. So fast. <laughs> gladiator sweat. I know. What the hell? I mean, I, I, I don't. I, I'm trying to think of a man whose sweat I would buy. Um, <laughs> maybe Alexander Draymond from The Last Kingdom. He's a Viking kind of dude. I, I might buy his sweat. Viking dude but sweat. Not I much think. Of it. Yeah. It's well, because drop. they were pretty clean. The Vikings. So if they're sweaty, it's new sweat. It's not old sweat. So it's probably oh, pretty, yeah, okay. pretty okay right. sweat. You know, they did those sauna things and they jump in the water. So they like they were pretty clean. So. Well, there's also and I this is fascinating to me about Roman hygiene. Like they were actually really good at hygiene. But one of the ways that they clean themselves, especially getting ready for sexy time, um, is they would cover themselves in oil, scented oil, and then and let it congeal on their skin and then take a, a wooden spatula kind of thing and just scrape it off of their bodies. And that would pull off the dirt and the wax or the oil that they had just poured on themselves. And I find that like alternately fascinating and completely disgusting. <laughs> like, yeah. I just know that there were Romans out there with waxy armpits where they oh, didn't get all of it yeah. and just <clears throat> and what do you do with that crap oh. once you scrape it off? Where does oh. that go? I just I don't know. But yeah, the day to day of like getting sex ready as a Roman. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I don't think I'm on board with that part. No. I'll, I'll, I'll hop in the bath. I'm into the thermal spa. But yeah, please well, they did. Me I mean, I remember seeing that in some of the baths, and maybe not Pompeii, but in certainly some of the Roman houses and some of the Roman bath houses, they had figured this out. They had figured out that you couldn't just have just a standing pool of hot water for a bunch of guys to just get in and, <laughs> you know, human bacteria frap as, as you know as Seinfeld. I, I went to the cabin in the mountains recently where they didn't put enough chlorine in the hot tub oh my god and uh I'm smelling that smell right now as you talk about oh my god. it it's so... in my nostrils <laughs> so but the Romans figured this out Ooh. so they actually had like an input for the fresh water and an output for the old water so they constantly mm -hmm. fed it with new water all the time like this was before they understood germs they understood anything about anything really yeah and they already yeah. figured out well we can't have them sitting in their own filth like this is disgusting, yeah. right? So, so actually, you like you said, their their hygiene was exceptional. Like for people, at I the, wonder. At the there's time. such a, yeah, there's such a militaristic society too that I wonder if that sort of regimented hygiene comes from that because they were they were really on it. They didn't want to stink. Yeah. They were really into not stinking. Yeah, they <laughs> proud of them. Really, like they had hot water pumped in, hot water plumbing. They and had... even better than that, they had the plumbing coming in under the tile floor so yeah. that those hot springs were then heating the floor with radiant heat. And they went like that. Oh, they're brilliant. Like, we don't brilliant. have radiant heat. You know what I mean? Like, I build don't. Build my <laughs> house, <Roman. laughs> I'm moving and I need you to build me a villa. I know. Exactly. God. It's like, this is so pathetic. I would kill for radiant heat. I know. Floors. Like, under the. What have the Romans ever given us? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> exactly. Imagine walking into your bathroom and your tile floor is all heated and it's gorgeous. <laughs> But yeah, they were like super clean, freaky people. So, you know, they, they yeah. it must have been actually fairly pleasant to consider. I'm pretty being, down for a Roman orgy. Yeah. yeah. Like it wouldn't have been a big deal, really. I think they were, and I think they were good at it's like. always sex ready. They, yeah. And they, they were good at like uh, removing hair. They were always kind of clean shaven everywhere. So it wasn't like you were going to get some thatch in your face or something. that's like. Ugh. You're going to be pulling stuff out of your teeth for yeah, days. Exactly. Yeah. That wasn't going to happen. Perfect. Right. So, so I, I find that kind of interesting. Now, I don't know what they did with um any uh, babies that might have resulted from these these orgies i don't i don't know how like uh, illegitimate children were handled back then because i know they, they had they very little... you know they had strong rules about marriage and all that kind of stuff so i don't know how they handled that do you know anything about that oh they gave them away real <sighs> quick oh or they put them in a box and buried the box oh my god um, 
oh. things like that happen. Yeah, you just kind of discard that. Okay, it was. It was about really. That. It was super emotionless. It was. Re- yeah, it's intense. Don't don't be a bastard orphan baby in Rome. You're Jeez. not gonna have a good time. Oh. Have a good time. Um, yeah, no, no. I mean, and obviously that's a huge generalization to say that. I'm sure that there were women who agonized over, yes. you know, um, you know what to do with their children. But they, a lot of them, it, they, this was their career, or they were slaves, so the, the kids were given away. Yeah. Um, but they, the, it just wasn't an option to have that kid. Kids right. got to go, got to keep working, got to keep a roof over my head. It's interesting that we have a different perspective on on some of the concepts of things like citizenship, slavery, you know, freedom, stuff like that, because yes. it was a totally different way of looking at things back then. It was. It was transactional in a lot of ways it was. with slavery. It was sort yeah. of like, okay, we captured you. You're going to earn your freedom back, and then you're done. Yeah. And then you get to become a member of Roman society, and you get all these benefits and privileges yeah. for that. So and it, once you're a member, then you're in. That's it. It was and more like a um, servant. Like you were an indentured servant. You you had to work yeah. for this company, this person or this whatever, this big family. But it yeah. wasn't like you were mistreated necessarily. It was just that you you know you had all your work had to go for them and so you got to be the one to scrape the gunk off somebody's yeah. body if you want to be free <laughs> yeah. if you want to be a roman citizen and enjoy the privileges right. of that then this is your trial period and you're gonna yeah you're gonna scrape the wax off <laughs> <laughs> my ass right now get on it i got an orgy to get to that's right snap snap come on you in one day you you might be me if you if, yeah. you, if you work hard enough and they could, and that's the coolest I know. thing. Once you became a citizen, like you had all the respect of a Roman citizen, and that it was a really that was a big kind of code in society. There, if you were a Roman citizen, you got that respect, no matter what, no matter yeah. where you came, from. no matter where you came from, and that was kind yeah. of interesting too. It's just, I mean, they're just so like take it as it comes. It's very interesting. They're cruel as can be, but oh, they're yeah. also they're pragmatic about that kind of stuff, and they realize that society functions better when you accept people into it instead of you know yeah. ostracizing yeah. or marginalizing them. Yeah, like I don't. I don't know if there's much of a caste system in the way they worked. I know they were class conscious, but I don't know if they had any kind of, were they, you know, particularly, um, like, were there groups of people that they shunned because of whatever, you know, the way. It's not sort of like uh, India's caste system with Brahmins and untouchable, that kind of thing. No, Um, it really was. I mean, it was sort of just an acceptance of like, get get on with it. Yeah. Go about your day. Like, do what you, okay, this is your job. This is your role. Go do what you need to do. I'm going to do what I need to do. Um, and they understood, I mean, it was, I don't know, it's, it, it was, it's not a democracy. Well, it was, it was, it was a republic, but it wasn't a democracy in the way that Greece was. Um, people, people understood who pulled the strings right. and that was kind of accepted too. So there is this, there is this ruling aristocratic class that then morphs into, uh, you know, emperors when we get, when we get there. But, um, but no, I mean, you were either upper crust or you were the middling sort and that was that. And I wonder and if they kind of, mixed, you know, like, if, if you could have, if you could intermarry or whatever. I wonder if that was acceptable or if that's why you went to the brothel was because, you know, you wanted some, <laughs> some hot action from somebody who just was not in your class, you know? I mean, she just isn't good enough to bring home to mom, you know? But wow, she can fuck, you know? Like, like oh. maybe, who knows, right? Yeah. You know? Have your favorite girl tucked away. Yeah. Well, I always, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, marriage and stuff like in a lot of um, in a lot of historical contexts was just a transactional thing for like producing Absolutely. children and you know uniting families. So a guy could easily just yeah. be like, yeah, I got my wife Agrippina or whatever at home, you know, but I'm gonna go have a three way at the brothel. I'm gonna I'm gonna order <laughs> item number seven, you know. <laughs> yeah. Agrippina in the house, That's Cleopatra right. on the street. That's right. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's and then maybe that's just the way it functioned. Was that, you know, I did I did hear that most um, male servants in in homes were eunuchs because they didn't mm. trust male slaves around the, the women. <laughs> because can you imagine once once your dude's going out to go get his little bit of Cleopatra at the brothel and you've got you know Mr. Marcus and <laughs> you know, come on over it's here. It's so wrong. Like, it feels really hot. Yeah. It's, oh my god. <laughs> Like like the plot of every porn ever, you know, like the Seriously. pool boy, you know. <laughs> so unfortunately, I'm go record an audio now about this. <laughs> I love, love this premise. <laughs> Just Damn. make sure you call him Aurelius. Oh, Aurelius, you know. <laughs> 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 Your Roman names are so difficult to like call out. In the Aren't they? Past. There's just Good no God. way. Caesar, so many syllables and Gaius, and Optimus, Octavius. Yeah, exactly. So. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right. this has been a fascinating foray into the world of 
of Roman Pompeii sex. So we have the we have Vesuvius to thank for preserving these beautiful mosaics. And I am going to show yes. pictures. And we'll, we'll find some. You should look for some, too. We can put them up there and people can see all these beautiful mosaics of all the sex acts and stuff. And the big, yes. Tell you us know. your favorite. Yeah. We should do that. We should have a, like a poll. Which what one? Combo? What yeah. combo would you go for if you were hungry for a little something, something? What would you, what number would Super you ask size for? It. Yeah. yeah. Super <laughs> size me. <laughs> That one. <laughs> I have a number three super size. Yeah, I have a number three, and if I get any energy left, I'm going to go for a number six. <laughs> <laughs> and a Diet Coke. And a Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't overindulge. You know, you got to have some for yeah, strength, exactly. right? Yeah, balance. Yeah, balance is exactly. essential. So. That's very key. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Insane or tea and a light soda. <laughs> It's a good day. It's a good day. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again on this episode of the History of Sex. Did you guys learn anything? Of did you learn did. anything from this? Let us know what you learned about Pompeii from this because I am dying to know if we actually got facts out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We it was will, really yeah. fun to talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't it? <laughs> I right. loved it. Yeah. So thanks for having me. Well, hey, this is this is our joint and this is our thing we're going to be doing a lot more of these so you know getting cozy in here i love it we're gonna have to do like i think we talked about this before but i would like to go through regency period in england like the pride mr darcy type stuff oh my god Uh, bo brummel yeah totally i think um i think vikings we got to do vikings at some point we got to get i get to to research that because i'm i do not know that much i know a bit but i'm I'm excited to dive into vikings And then there's Egypt. There's ancient Egypt. They were like, wow, they were out there. They had all kinds of amazing, amazing ideas about sex and what it meant and all this. So we got and indigenous, indigenous. I want to learn about Native American patriarchal societies where if women ran the if women ran everything, like how did that how did that translate into the sex life? I'm real curious. So we got a lot more. We've got a lot more history sex episodes to do. So we're going to get to the on our constant mission to prove that throughout throughout the ages, humans are just horny little buggers yeah and we're, we're just, all the same we're just yeah. horny and we just like to fuck and it's it's, it's pretty cool okay so <laughs> thank you for listening and i am eve's garden and you are i'm alexa yvo <laughs> and uh and i love talking kinky history with you guys yeah we love so it much fun so join us again <laughs> bye bye you <laughs> Sound like Alexis from Rosh's Creek. You what? He did. <laughs> 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 <laughs>